Good evening. My name is Major Bender, and I'd like to welcome you to the Barracks, Ships, and Dorms, or BSD, resident meeting hosted by Brigadier General Laura Linderman, the, 50, the 502nd Air Base Wing Commander, and the JBSA Commander. Joining her today on the panel are Mr. Rich Trevino, and he is the 502nd CE Director. Major General DeGoes, he is the 59th Medical Wing Commander. Chief Lantain, he's the 502nd Command Chief. Colonel Robinson, he's the 12th Flying Tra Training Wing Commander. And Lieutenant Colonel Haig, he is the Deputy Commander for the Security Forces Group. Fly, please. Here's the agenda for today. The, uh, there's, uh, the General is going to brief the actions that we've taken to this point in time, as well as the, the proposed way aheads. And then we're going to open it up to uh, an open forum. And to best facilitate that open forum, we have a couple ground rules. First, we want an open and honest conversation, but please be professional. Second, um, if you want to ask a question, please come up to the mic. Third, PA is recording this, so if you have any issues with that, just get with PA and PA, raise your hand, and we'll edit you guys out. And third, we request that you limit your questions to about two to three minutes to uh, ensure everybody has a chance to ask questions. Slide, please. So why we're here, we want to listen to your feedback and really see where we can help you. So please view this as an opportunity to talk to leadership and voice your concerns and uh, so, so we can best serve you. And we want to, stre we want to really stress that this is a non-reprisal environment. So please feel free to ask any questions. Slide, please. And with that, thanks again for attending. And ma'am, the floor is yours. All right, thanks, Major Bender. And uh, once again, I want to echo those uh, remarks and especially the previous slide, if you could go back one. Um, this is a non-attributional and non-reprisal uh, environment. So again, if you have any concerns about bringing your, your specific issues forward, please let us know. Um, we, can, we can take you out of the video, the recording, or we can meet you offline and take care of any issues that you might have uh, within your dorm space. Um, but the most important thing is we need to hear what's going on in your living conditions. And if there's things that have not been addressed and we need to get after them, this is the opportunity uh, to get your name to the top of the list. Um, so we really do appreciate the feedback and also any concerns that you've had uh, while you've been living here at Joint Base San Antonio. So with that, I just wanted to start off by saying that your health and safety, uh, that is my number one concern. Um, that's why we're here tonight, and that's why we have a, a great panel here in front of us to, to address and over to my left as well. Uh, we've been after this problem uh, for the whole time that I've been in command. So I took command back in Jan uh, June of 2018, and I can say that my predecessors were also concerned about this issue. Um, mold within our dorm space is not a surprise. Uh, what was a surprise was the extent of the mold. Um, but since we've been here, we've been after uh, this various uh, issues within the dorms, including mold, HVAC problems, plumbing, electrical, all the things that we need to, to stay healthy and safe. Um, they're challenging here. We have older infrastructure, especially at Randolph. We have newer infrastructure um, over at uh, Lackland and um, Fort Sam. But they have very similar problems. They're design problems. There's uh, just keeping up with the, the hot summers of San Antonio. We also compete with the local community for uh, skilled craftsmen. This is one of the fastest growing cities in the United States. And so they are also competing with us for the same types of folks, the plumbers, the uh, HVAC, the electricians, the structures folks, everybody that we need, they need too. Uh, so that is, does add to our challenges. Uh, we do appreciate what happened on social media because that brought to attention an extent of the problem that we weren't aware of. And it also created an environment where we can create m momentum. So like I said, this is something we have been working on and getting after the last year, but now we have incredible support um, up and down the chain, um, and now is a chance to really make a difference. So with that, I do want to talk about the things that we have been doing over the last three weeks um, that have been motivated um, by the incident that happened or the, um, the pictures that were shown on Facebook. So with that, we've done 100% on 100% inspection of all the dorms across Joint Base San Antonio. Uh, we've done two phases of inspection. The first phase was completed on the first, or excuse me, the second of August, and we got a good idea of what was happening across the dorms. But then we wanted to target some more specific uh, rooms that had mold identified, and we also wanted to target some specific dorm rooms in general that traditionally have our pro uh, most prob problematic rooms. So we completed the second phase of inspections uh, just this past week, 
And at the conclusion of that uh, round of inspections, we had 2,500 of our 8,000 dorms had some uh, presence of mildew or mold. Now, so that's about 30%, which is, um, which is a good uh, baseline for us to understand the extent of the problem. And like I said, different dorms have different issues. Uh, most of the mold was found in the bathrooms and the air vents, the HVAC vents, uh, so that's a good place for us to start. In some cases, it was found on soft goods, which would be your carpet or um, your chairs that might have some fabric and some personal property. It's one of the reasons why we have a judge advocate here today. Um, Oh, to my left, and they're going to have a slide later on. But really, if you have any damage to your personal property, whether it occurred in the last couple of weeks or it occurred since you've been here in Joint Base San Antonio, um, we do have an opportunity for you to file a claim so you can get reimbursed for any damage that occurred to your personal property due to mold or mildew or some sort of damage, whether it was a broken pipe or that kind of thing that is, has occurred in the past. Um, so the things that we're doing right now, and uh, first of all, I meant to say in the beginning too, is thank you. Thank you for letting us uh, come into your rooms and, and kind of disrupt your lives for once or twice or three times, the number of times that we've been in your rooms to check out what's going on. We do appreciate that. And we understand that some of you are here in training status, and that's a disruption. Some of you are here permanent party, and that's a disruption. Um, so again, thank you for letting us come in. It's important that we see what's going on specifically in each of your rooms uh, versus versus general generalizations of the actual dorm because each room's a little different. Each room has a unique uh, airflow. Each room has a different HVAC and uh, can have a different set of circumstances just from your neighbor next door. And so our civil engineer is going to talk next about details about mold and mildew and, and th some of the things that we found and some of the things we're doing to prevent it. But in general, uh, the things that we're focused on is controlling the temperature and controlling the humidity. Uh, it's very difficult here in San Antonio to do both of those things. But if we can, and we can keep the humidity below 50%, it's less likely a chance for the mold to grow. So that means we have to have really great HVACs. We have to have up and working uh, systems. We have to have uh, pipes that don't break, or we can repair them and re remediate the uh, water in the rooms. Um, we also are placing dehumidifiers in some of our rooms that are more prone to mold and mildew. Our gold is to have a um, dehumidifier in every room, uh, but when you consider we have 8,000 rooms, uh, that's going to take a little bit of time, but we're hitting the rooms that have the most problematic issues right now and prioritizing. So some of you might already have those uh, dehumidifiers. We're in the process of ordering the next round.
it creates condensation. And if you go to any house, even if you go to your own house, and you have a temperature too low, and you see moisture around your window sills, that's because your temperature stays too low. And you're creating that condensation, which again, what's the major driver for mold? Moisture. It gives me the ability to grow. So that's how we're trying to look at those things. So as you look at this slide, we're going to send out to everyone. The intent is just little things that we can do collectively to, again, keep the temperature good, keep the moisture down, keep the airflow going. Things as simple as bringing more sunlight into your room, having a ceiling fan go if you have it, working your dehumidifier. Those small things collectively, cumulatively, can make a huge difference. Any questions before we go on?
casting a wide net, uh, and we've you know, let our allergy folks know in our primary care clinics and BAMC's ER and our emergency room at Lackland and then the 359 bed group here know to be on the lookout for it. Uh, but you know, because the symptoms are identical, unless people declare and say, well, I'm in the mold room, it's hard to get you know, adequate numbers. But since we've been tracking it, we've had around 20 cases. If you've got asthma, uh, which almost none of our dorm dwellers do because we, you can't get into the Air Force without a waiver from Colonel Zay, who's sitting right there, the AETC surgeon, if you had an asthma after the age of 13. But, but if, if that was the case, we haven't seen one yet, but that's something that we look for. Who is mold really a problem for? People with an impaired immune system. So if you have cancer, if you have chemotherapy, if you have some inflammatory disease that requires you to take steroids, that would be a problem. If you have bad lung disease, so you know, bad, that you could actually get a, a mold kind of infection. <clears throat> what about different kinds of molds? You know, the CDC would say there really is no value added to testing for a specific type of mold that uh, whether it's green mold, black mold, white mold, clear mold, it, it, uh, they all have the most common thing is, uh, is allergy-like symptoms, and the, uh, the testing is not standardized and it's not very helpful. And so if you see mold, remove it, and then remove the conditions which cause it to come back, which is leaks and humidity. Slide. And that, that last bullet there, I think, is important. Ms. St. Christians in the reporter asked me, has there ever been a death you know, in a healthy person from mold? And the answer is no, that there is not. That the, the real health problems with mold, other than allergy and an asthma flare, are in people who have underlying health problems. So these link, links here, which will be available, I'm, I'm pretty sure, at, at uh, the, the website, again, you to take a look at that the single uh, best uh, report is that CDC's facts on mold and dampness uh, and it's really helpful to demystify it they will tell you you know there's the, the black toxic mold is really kind of a misnomer uh, in that that molds like some bacteria do produce toxins but they're not in and of themselves you know toxic per se if you're otherwise healthy. So <clears throat> there's also some good information about allergy and neology. What I would put stop is that anyone who has any symptoms or any of your personnel who have anything that they, they may feel is mold related or they're just not feeling right, please come and seek out healthcare. We have plenty of that available, uh, even during the challenging summer underlap season, uh, both here at Randolph, at Lackland, and at Fort Sam. And so uh, I, I will join the rest of the panel in taking questions at the end as long as you want. If you have any right now, I can take one right now. Okay. Who's next? I have a camera. Good evening. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Ben Martin. I'm the uh, local staff judge advocate here at Randolph. So the foot stop um, for or for supervisors is that there is a process, there is an expedited process if your uh, personal property has been damaged by plant, uh, by mold. Um, a couple of things to note for you when you're filing that process. You asked a really interesting question about do we have to clean? And it's gonna be a, a slightly different answer if we're talking about personal property. The claim service center uh, that is going to process that claim, they may want to see if, hey, if you have a, a jacket or something that had mold on it, did you take it to the dry clean? Were you able to get it clean before you filed a, a claim asking to have that replaced? And then when you file that claim, you, you file it both for the cost of the jacket and the cost of the dry cleaning. So some of the things, um, supervisors, um, airmen that you get, uh, there may be some requirements where if you can't get it clean, um, you might want to try to with your personal property um, to see if whatever that personal item can be salvaged before you file the claim and then follow that claims process. Um, there are several ways to file the claims, um, but really the, 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 the one that I would encourage is that we have an online system. There, we have received um, some expedited processing where we have uh, 
been given a, for all of JPSA, a username and a password to enter into the system, and it's all being filed, it's being expedited when it gets up to right Patterson, um, and that gets done. The other option is that you can just come into my office and talk with my folks, and we'll walk you through it. So I am actually the first floor of the building right over here. Um, when the doors are open, come on in, um, tell them um, what you're here for, that it's a, a dorm mold issue uh, for a personal property claim, and, and my team will walk you through that. Um, so it, again, that's, that's the basics. The hooks on here is there is a process. Don't just assume that if something you had, if something you value is damaged or done by mold, um, that there's nothing that anybody can do about it. There is a process to file, and uh, we can walk you through that. Ma'am. With that, we can open it up to the floor. If there's any concerns or questions from our residents or from our leadership teams, um, but again, I do want to thank you for coming tonight. It does mean a lot that you're here. Um, you know, we do care and we want to make things better. So please let us know how we can do that, even if it's not related to mold. Is there something else in your dorm situation or your housing uh, conditions that we can address? That I'd love to hear your feedback. One thing I do want to put stump is anytime your HVAC goes out, please let leadership know. Please let your dorm manager know or your MTL or, or your first sergeant uh, if you're not getting the response you need. You should not have to spend the night in a dorm that doesn't have air conditioning or heat. Um, we have the capability to move you to lodging for the night. Uh, we have, if there's lodging available. If there's not, we can move you to an off-base hotel. Uh, if there's a, a travel concern or you don't have a car, we can take care of that as well. Um, she should never be able or never be uh, thinking you have to stay in a room that doesn't have air conditioning, not in San Antonio, Texas. Okay, with that, mics are open. Any feedback on the dorm council? So if you're not getting that kind of uh, response from those kinds of issues, then that needs to be elevated quickly. Um, so one thing you can do is go to your first sergeant. Um, I think that that would be a great way to elevate it. And if we have um, contact information that we can pass out after the meeting where you have direct lines to us uh, or our civil engineers or even myself. I have a program called Feedback Fridays. That's not going to be an immediate uh, response. Um, we try to turn those in 24 hours, especially related to mold or any sort of health and safety conditions. But if it's an immediate concern, um, you can always call our command post. Uh, they can get a direct line to our civil engineer, uh, the on-call center. Um, and then, of course, like I said, your first sergeant, your chain of command is the best way because um, they can elevate it quickly to, to our leadership team um, in the 502nd. second. But I'd like to turn it over to Richard just so he can talk about the work order process and also that exact question just to make sure that he checks me on what I what I just shared. Thank you, ma'am. So when it comes to the work order process, so there, let's just talk a couple of situations. So if you're a permanent party, then your, your first request ought to go to your dorm manager. And then typically if it's, you know, again, one of those three major categories, if it's HVAC, plumbing, or mold, it's a high priority task, typically we will respond within that 24 hours. That doesn't mean that we're going to necessarily fix your HVAC, we're going to respond to see how bad is it, and then if we have to physically move you, because if we look at it and say, let's say it's completely burnt out compressor, that's something that I can't fix within 20 minutes, I'm going to have to go get another compressor, but we have to basically at that point figure out what we're going to do. 
Are we going to put you into a different room? Yes or no. And then if you feel like they're not getting that, then what, what we're going to do is also provide as part of the dorm management, you should have basically their contact all the way up to the chain of command to contact what ultimately they, it gets to me and be able to do that. But also, as Jeruna has indicated, your first sergeant is also another, or your, or your chain of command is another mechanism to where if you feel you're not getting that. A typical uh, routine work order can take anywhere from 30 plus days. In between, that's called an urgent. The urgents typically, we have to respond and get complete within at least five to seven days. So part of it may be is, I look at your HVAC, it, it may take some parts, that may take two, three days to get in. And then in the interim, I relocate you someplace else until that actual part is in, I fix your HVAC system, and then we move it back in. And same thing on the tech training side, the only difference is, if you're not talking to a dorm manager as your facility manager, talk, the MTL is actually the facility manager, they, put, they submit the work order into what's called a Trireva system, which allows us to track and receive work order JDSA. And then that basically goes to our shops and then we go and respond in order to address those issues. The same thing applies if it's an HVAC issue, plumbing issue, or a mold issue, whether it's tech training permit party or BMT, they have to respond within those same timelines. Any questions? Don't be shy. So there were some, so from yesterday, there were some questions about, you know, how, if you have a if you have your HVAC system out, you know, what are some of the things that we could be doing? So from a CE perspective, how are we going to fix some of those things? So for instance, for JVSA Randolph, what you should be able to see in your room is, well, what are some of the helpful hints, right? You know, is your HVAC working? If you're not going to be in your room, definitely don't turn it off. You know, leave it on, that's okay. Uh, it's, when you see, if you don't feel like in terms of the shower, also it's small things that you can help, we can help each other. If you ask the question, should you clean the mold? The answer is no. But also there's things that we can do collectively, say, leave your doors open, right? When it comes to your shower. If you see that the exhaust system's not working, by all means, let us know. It's that airflow ventilation. It's just a standard, also, the, the, the general cleanliness. If you see something like that's moisture, as what Jim Bethesda says, moisture's a big one, clean those things up. That's, a, that's no different than anyone's house, right? Uh, the biggest concerns from uh, even other residents were, why did it take so long? Why are we here at this stage and point? The reality of it is, I mean, we have old infrastructure as General Limit has indicated. And our infrastructure is not said that it's an excuse, but it does, it does take a little bit of effort to maintain it. So the long-term solution is to actually do the renovations to where we can eliminate, like you're talking about, sir, does it matter within first, second, or third floor? It really shouldn't matter. The design should work the way it's supposed to. And there was also a question that brought up was, well, are we going to build any new dorms anytime soon? So from, from an Air Force perspective, we will not be building any new dorms anytime soon because we, I'm sorry, at that grand dog, correct. Because right now we have met our need. So based upon the based upon the permanent party or based upon the population for JVC Randolph, we have a certain percentage of how many you know, up to year three from the permits that we have, and that determines our need. And right now, we have enough capacity on JVSA Randolph to meet that demand. So we also, and that, so one thing that we're also looking at doing is, as we look at, so there's two pieces of the, of the to make the situation better. There's a short-term piece and there's a long-term piece. So for an example, short term, when you make repairs, one of the things that we are looking at is, is to eliminate carpeting in a lot of the rooms. Carpeting, although it sounds nice, carpeting is actually a very big detractor in terms of keeping moisture in. It's actually a bad thing. It actually, it actually attracts moisture. So carpeting for us is an opportunity for a mold to grow. If you have your carpeting, you have those soft surfaces, uh, like if you have uh, fabric furniture, those are things that we're trying to eliminate. So when it comes to getting rid of carpeting, uh, getting rid of uh, furniture that has a lot of the fabric pieces, we're trying to look at doing away with those. Again, those are 
Those are opportunities for mold to grow if we don't control the humidity, we don't control the moisture. Those types of things we're doing short term. And then what we're also trying to do within you know, the Air Force perspective is some big renovations is to make certain that we, we want to get to the point of saying we're going to address the root cause. One of the things we are trying to get to is we're trying to push the Air Force what's called repair by replacement concept. And what that means basically is because we can't really build new construction. We're trying to be able to uh, get uh, congressional language and get you know, the Air Force to say, I want to take the facility and I want to, it, it to be located in one location, but I want to build it from scratch and build a whole new facility at whatever location on the installation. You're not using, basically you're not using a different corporation, but to build that so you can build the right one. Get the design that you're talking about, sir. Get the design necessary. Whether it's one, two, or three stories, it doesn't matter. And it allows us to build the facility and basically take it down to the guts and nothing else. Down the studs if necessary and actually do it from scratch. Those are things that we're trying to get to as part of our long range dorm training uh, campus plans to look at those things across JDs. We have dormitory uh, renovations projected for the next five to seven years across JDs. Be able to work those issues. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, if there's anything else if you'd like to come up after, um, we'd be happy to, to talk to you or answer your questions or address your specific rooms or your dorms um, that you've been having troubles with or issues with that continue to plague us. Um, but I do want to say again, thank you so much. Thanks for being here tonight. It says a lot that you came and we really appreciate uh, your interest. We appreciate your leadership. We appreciate your patience as we continue to, to make JDSA a wonderful place to live and, and work and love, again, your feedback is important. So please come on up afterwards. Um, but I do want to also leave it with uh, the Air Force writ large is looking at this issue. Um, you know, we happen to be the, the ones that, that started uh, the chain, but it's a, it's a good sign. Our Air Force is looking out across the entire force to see where the challenges are. And uh, there are challenges in a lot of different places, uh, a lot along the southeast and along the uh, southern parts of our country, especially within ATC, because that seems to be where we're located. Um, so the lessons that we're learning here and the feedback that you're giving us, we're providing up to Air, Air Force to share with the larger enterprise if they can learn the lessons that we're learning right now as we speak. Um, because the Air Force has taken risk in infrastructure over time. The Department of Defense has taken uh, risk in infrastructure. As we've been fighting uh, three different wars, uh, we've been also paying for major weapon systems and also rebuilding uh, other bases that have been hit by natural disasters, especially in fiscal year uh, 2019. So it's just been kind of a little bit of a perfect storm uh, for us, but it's also an opportunity. So we're not going to waste the opportunity. We're not going to waste the momentum. Uh, like I said, we've got some great, uh, great folks that are supporting us. We've got tons of leadership involvement, um, and we've got now the resources and the, and the uh, momentum behind us. So with that, thank you again for coming. Uh, we're going to have these slides available. We'll be sure to post the video for the folks that weren't able to attend in person. And um, again, don't hesitate to call us or reach out to us when you have questions or concerns because we know this problem isn't going to end tomorrow. Uh, we still have to maintain vigilant and uh, be really uh, on top of it to prevent it from happening again. All right, with that, thank you again and have a good evening. Thanks.